If you live in California, over the last few days, you've probably noticed just how cold our nights have been. And a big reason for this is we've had clear skies overnight. So we've actually been kind of hoping for clouds to come in. Yeah, that would mean it'd be cooler during the day, but it also wouldn't mean that we'd be dropping down below freezing at nighttime. So this kind of made me just wonder the question, like why do clouds make it colder during the day? but warmer at night. It seems like one of those things that's contradictory, but when you actually dive into the science, it makes perfect sense. So I thought we'd just explore that throughout the course of this video. So we'll just go over to Meteorology Insider. Why do cloudy days feel colder, but cloudy nights feel warmer? So just starting off very similar to how we did. Have you ever wondered why it feels colder on cloudy days and warmer on cloudy nights? It's a common question. And the answer lies in the way clouds affect the temperature of the Earth's surface. In this post, we will explore the science behind this phenomenon and shed some light on this interesting question. So this is similar to the video that I did yesterday, where we were talking about why do moist nights feel colder, but moist days feel hotter. So the quick summary of that was during the day, if there's a lot of humidity and it's hot out, your body wants to sweat and then have that sweat evaporate and cool you down because it takes heat energy. And then, yeah, it basically is your natural air conditioning system. When it's very humid out, the evaporation of your sweat doesn't happen as easily. So your natural air conditioning system kind of breaks down and it feels hotter. Versus at nighttime, you're not sweating, so you don't really want to be evaporating. But if there's more moisture in the air, it attaches to your skin, like the moisture, and then that evaporates, cooling you down, almost like if you were sweating and you wanted to cool down. So it's one of those contradictions. That might have been a bit too wordy, but it's one of those contradictions where it's the same kind of mechanism, more humidity, makes you hotter during the day, but cooler at night, or just hotter when it's hot out and cooler when it's cold out. So. I was thinking about what other aspects are like that, and I could think of a couple others. One was clouds. Cloud during the day makes it cooler. Clouds at night make it warmer. The other one is wind. If it's windy during the day, you get that wind chill effect because your body normally creates like almost a thermal shield around you, and the wind just breaks that, sh that shield. That's why it's called wind chill. And then that can also happen at night. This one's not a perfect example, but at nighttime, you get a lot of infrared radiation leaving Earth's surface. So you end up with a very cold layer right on Earth's surface. But if it's windy, it's able to mix up that layer a little bit more. So all the cold air doesn't just sit right where people are. So windy nights feel a little bit warmer. So kind of just wanted to go over those various contradictions and then said something in there that's going to be important throughout the rest of this video. Key statement was that during nighttime, infrared radiation leaves the surface. That'll be important moving forward. So understanding the greenhouse effect. To understand why clouds affect temperature, we need to first understand the greenhouse effect. The Earth's atmosphere acts as a blanket, trapping some of the sun's energy and keeping our planet warm. This is known as the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is caused by gases in the atmosphere that trap heat, like carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So greenhouse effect, interestingly, it's actually not named that well. People thought named it the greenhouse effect because they thought this is how greenhouses worked where visible sunlight comes in and then the infrared radiation can't leave the greenhouse. So then it feels a lot warmer in there and it's good for your plants. I'm, I'm not a gardener, so I don't actually know exactly how that all that stuff works. But what ended up happening was it turns out greenhouse greenhouses are actually just a lot warmer because it doesn't allow the air to mix with the cooler air around it. It just kind of traps that air inside. So there was some debate that the greenhouse effect when it, in terms of the atmosphere should be renamed the atmospheric effect. But there's, I, I think it's, once you have a name, there's no point in changing it. And it kind of makes intuitive sense. It's, yeah, that's just being a little too nuanced if we were to change greenhouse effect at this point. And it is basically kind of how it works. It's like an insulating blanket around us and it just traps the warm air in instead of letting it all just escape. And 
it's bad if it gets out of hand. Like, I forget which planet it was. I think it might have been Venus. But they had a positive feedback loop make their greenhouse effect just go out of control. And then their temperature just skyrocketed. And if there was any life, not anymore. So it's important that you don't want it to go out of hand. But you also need a greenhouse effect in order for life to exist. Eh, I don't know if I can go that far. But it would be the average temperature of Earth is 59 degrees. If we didn't have a greenhouse effect, it would be zero degrees. So greenhouse effect important, but you also don't want it to run away on you. So clouds and temperature, let's move on. <laughs> clouds are formed when water vapor in the atmosphere condenses into tiny droplets or ice crystals. Clouds can either reflect or absorb the sun's energy depending on their altitude and thickness. So clouds at different heights and then clouds of different kind of widths or thickness can reflect or absorb radiation differently. So when clouds reflect the sun's energy, they act as a shield blocking the sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface. This is why cloudy days tend to be cooler than sunny days. So this one, completely intuitive. If there's a lot of clouds out, less sunlight's coming through. It's just bouncing off the clouds, not reaching the surface, and it's colder. Now, on the other hand, when clouds absorb the sun's energy, they act as a blanket, trapping some of the heat near the Earth's surface. This is why cloudy nights tend to be warmer than clear nights. Clouds can also trap heat that is radiated from the Earth's surface, which can contribute to warmer temperatures at night. So during the day, if you have clouds, it blocks the sunlight from coming in. But during at night, there's no new sunlight coming in. There's only infrared radiation leaving the surface. And the clouds are able to trap it, almost like a blanket. They absorb it, and then they re-emit it back down to the surface, making us feel a little bit warmer. And that's why we explained, kind of explained the greenhouse effect earlier, is it works the exact same way. It's radiation comes in, and then radiation goes out. But gases like CO2 and then also water vapor are able to absorb some of that radiation going out and then re-emit it back down, making us warmer than we otherwise would be. I think I actually didn't really explain the greenhouse effect earlier. I just kind of stumbled through trying to explain how greenhouses work. But that's your basic ex explanation. It's like a blanket. So cloud type and altitude. The temperature difference between cloudy days and nights can also depend on the type and altitude of the clouds. This is actually something I don't know very much about, so this will be new information for all of us. Low-lying clouds, like stratus clouds, tend to reflect more sunlight and cool the Earth's surface. So low-lying clouds tend to reflect more sunlight and cool the Earth's surface. Okay, basically just said it again, but had to. So high altitude clouds like cirrus clouds tend to absorb more heat and warm the Earth's surface. This is because high altitude clouds are made up of ice crystals which absorb more energy than water droplets. So what I'm seeing there is low level clouds, low line clouds like stratus clouds are more of that shield mechanism. And then high altitude clouds like cirrus clouds are more of the blanket mechanism. So we can think stratus, shield, cirrus, blanket. So yeah, I think that makes sense. And then it's because high altitude clouds have more ice crystals, which absorb more of the radiation, act more like a blanket. So it seems weird that a blanket would be better if it was made of ice, but works in terms of the atmosphere. So effects on climate change. Understanding the role of clouds in regulating the Earth's temperature is important when it comes to climate change. Climate models show that changes in cloud cover could have a significant impact on the Earth's temperature. So this is something I remember reading this in one of my textbooks about how difficult it is to make these climate models. There's all kinds of mathematical equations. It's just thousands of lines of code, all the data you could possibly imagine. And one of the trickiest parts of the climate models is knowing what's going to happen with clouds, because as we've been reading, clouds are very complex. Sometimes they make you warmer, sometimes they make you colder. So with climate change, if there's going to be more clouds, well, that's the first question. Will there be more clouds or not?
But then let's say, yes, you get more clouds because the atmosphere is warmer, so it can hold more moisture. So then you end up with more clouds. That seems reasonable. But then the question would be, but will those clouds make it warmer or colder? And it might tie back to what we already read. Well, if it makes more of the low-lying clouds, it might make it colder. But if it makes more of the high-level clouds, it might make it warmer. So interesting. Let's read on and see what they say. For example, if there were fewer low-lying clouds, more sunlight would reach the Earth's surface and cause it to warm up. On the other hand, if there were more high-altitude clouds, they could reflect more sunlight and cool the Earth's surface. Now, I don't know very much about climate models, even though I sort of built one for my master's in meteorology. Different kind of model, though. Um, but I imagine that is one of the most difficult things to figure out when it comes to the code and how clouds will affect your predictions of future temperature. So, in conclusion, cloudy days tend to be cooler because they reflect the sun's energy, while cloudy nights tend to be warmer because they trap heat near the Earth's surface. That is just a perfect, concise sentence right there. The type and altitude of the clouds can also have an impact on temperature. Understanding the role of clouds in regulating the Earth's temperature is important when it comes to climate change, as changes in cloud cover could have a significant impact on Earth's temperature. And the key thing that I actually just learned today, low-level clouds are like a shield, high-level clouds are like a blanket. So we hope that this post has shed some light on this interesting question and helped you better understand the science behind it. Next time you step outside on a cloudy day or night, you can appreciate the role that clouds play in regulating our planet's temperature. So the basic summary is during the day, clouds are like a shield, block sunlight from coming in, makes it feel colder. At nighttime, clouds are like a blanket, insulates some of the radiation that would just be escaping into space and makes it feel warmer. But when it comes to clouds, there's lots of different nuances, like the level and thickness that they have, and that can have different impacts on their overall effect. So hopefully you learned something today. I know that I did. I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching.